You're listening to Brave Girls with Tracy M, where we choose to empower you to be a better leader, mentor, and coach in the world. We'll share stories of people who have achieved great heights by overcoming adversity and rising to the challenge, all while pursuing their passions. These courageous people will inspire you to have faith in yourself and take bold action. Right here with the host of Brave Girls, Tracy M. Episode 35, Serve from Overflow with Laura DeFranco. On this episode, I interview Laura DeFranco about her Brave Girl story. She's a fellow podcaster, blogger, and author of Brave Healing, A Guide for Your Journey. Weaving together over two decades of healing experience and therapeutic writing skills, Laura's book gives you tools that redefine healing. She's an expert in holistic physical therapy, as well as a multi-passionate woman on a mission to help other women feel better in their bodies. I just really connected with Laura as she shares information about her workshops, her mastermind groups, and her writing programs. We also talk about why we both love podcasting so much and how it pays it forward in the world. I love how knowledgeable Laura is about the mind-body-spirit connection and what she's learned by training in the martial arts. We talk about trusting your intuition and some exercises that you can do when you need to make a decision. She also shares how she has used blogging to grow her audience and her platform. We talk about the importance of self-care as women and why we often neglect our own needs and how that leads to burnout. She shares why we need proper nutrition, exercise, sleep, and a spiritual practice in order to serve others. We discuss why and how sleep heals and nourishes your body and why you need, actually need more naps to be refreshed and productive. We also talk about setting boundaries and how to keep commitments to yourself. We have to stand up for ourselves, build a strong support system, and show up in the world as our best selves. Laura is just so wise, so brave, and so kind. I know that you will learn from her and learn why you can only serve when you have overflow. So here's Laura DeFranco. So welcome to Brave Girls with Tracy M. Today I have Laura DeFranco with me from bravehealer.com and I'm really excited to introduce everyone to her. She's a holistic healer, a physical therapist, a writer, a creative. She's got lots of things out in the world and I just am so excited that I came into contact with her through someone I met at the Baltimore Book Festival um, amazingly and Laura also has a book and so welcome to the show Laura. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, I think your mem is it your memoir, Brave Healing, A Guide for Your Journey? Yes. I happen to have it right here so you can see the cover. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is beautiful front cover artwork by Stacey Little Deer. I always love to give her a little plug because she does some amazing art. Um, and yeah, they're calling these kinds of books teaching memoirs because um, how I ordered this was every other chapter is a little bit about me and my personal story. And um, the other chapters are tools. And so I'm really teaching the reader how to connect with their body. And then we sort of marry that with a therapeutic writing process right there in the book. And that is the magic of this book, seriously. That's great. So yeah, I noticed that you're also, you have a blog and you guest blog um, a lot about mind, body, spirit. And um, I, I guess your belief is that writing and art can be a healing practice. Yes, definitely. In fact, for people, you know, anything that you find meditative where you start the activity and then you're just lost for hours sometimes. One of my very favorite writing prompts of all time is, what do you love to do so much you lose track of time? And I just think those things like art and writing, and um, some people will tell me they're knitting, um, you know, all those types of activities are kind of like that. And writing for me, writing turns me on. That's great. That's great. So how, um, so you have a physical therapy practice after you've worked for other hospitals or rehab facilities, and now you've gone out on your own and you've got this whole 
I call it like almost like an empire, your platform <laughs> of brave healing. Thank where, you. Yeah, you have a writing club, you have workshops, you even have your own podcast. But one question I have is when I was reading your um, bio, you are a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. So talk a little bit about that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. So, um, you know, Taekwondo is really um, a mind body practice and I've been training for over 12 years. And I'll tell you a little story about that. When my son was five and a half, we were looking for an activity for him to do um, just to get him started and socializing more and all that. And we attended a class, a Taekwondo class at our local Y together just to watch. And so we watched for a little while. We walked out the door and I looked down at him. I'm like, so what do you think, buddy? And he looked up at me and he said, well, I'll do it if you do it, mom. (laughs) (laughs) And six years later, we earned our black belts together. Oh, and that's so, awesome. yes, it's a fan. I love telling that story. And actually my very first book ever was um, self-published back in 2012. And it was um, a detailing of that six year journey of me as a healer, as a mom, the martial arts journey. And um, it was really, really fabulous. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I think um, it's interesting how we kind of fall into these things that then teach us. <laughs> Definitely. It's about ourselves and things like that. So um, are you, were you a writer before you were a physical therapist? I mean, had you been a writer when you were a kid? That's a great question. Yeah. And I can say that now because I look back and realize I've been journaling since I was 15. And I actually kept every single journal and little, you remember the little diaries with the yes. little lock and key? Yes. Yep. I own every single one of them. I kept them in a box. And um, the secret about that first book is I had journaled through that six year period of time because I had, I've always journaled, right? So when the book idea came to me back then, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, this book is already written. And right. sure enough, I went back to those journals and I had detailed stories of, you know, us in class together and when we tested and all the things that were going through my heart and mind and soul during those years. And so um, y'all do the journaling because you probably all have a book already written. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, journaling can be really um, therapeutic um, and very good for your soul. And it's, you know, it's maybe it never sees the light of day, but, you know, putting pen to paper is connects you to your heart and gets you out of your head. And just, you know, if you've ever done the artist way by Julia Cameron and, and some of her programs, it's just, just write, 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 write until you, and, and, and the things that will come through you are amazing. Um, what are some of the things that you do at your workshop? Like where you talk about intuitive writing for healers, is, is that primarily just for other um, practitioners uh, of the healing arts, or is it just anybody can come to that? Oh, thank you for asking about that. That's really, I think, one of the reasons I was born is that workshop, believe it or not. I know that's a pretty powerful statement, but intuitive writing for healers is um, six weeks online. We go on Zoom like we are now, and you know how they talk about ideal clients these days, well, I don't know if I like that, that phrase very much. It's sort of getting old. But if, if I had to talk to you about who shows up to that class for me, it would be a fellow healer who's really wanting, like feeling that burning call inside to tell their story in a bigger way. So it, we go through the weeks and we do the writing together. We do the sharing. We do the healing work that really brings them to the other side. And what I mean by that is feeling worthy and brave every day about how they're sharing their stories so that they can build their businesses and kind of leave the legacy they were born for too. And so I really feel like this course is me paying my journey forward and helping other people do it. Mm Mm-hmm. That's Thanks great. for letting me talk about it. I, yeah, I love yeah. that course. Yeah. Do you offer it um, on like a rolling basis kind of thing? Oh, well, that would, be, that would be a great thing to, to tell you. Um, yeah. The next one is coming January uh, 4th. It's going to be Friday mornings for six mornings once a week. And it's half full, y'all. So if you'd like a spot in that class, please get with me. It's going to be a transformational experience. 
That's great. That's great. So talk a little bit about your, your journey as a podcaster, because there's not a lot of female podcasters out there, but are you finding that that's just another medium to get your message out there? Yes. And oh man, I love podcasting. So who knew, right? Because I mean, you're talking to somebody who was, I call myself a severe introvert, meaning not the good, like I'm an introvert in a sense that I like to recharge alone. Um, but I am, you know, as far as public speaking goes, I would have not been able to do a podcast. I wouldn't have been able to step on a stage like I am now um, back in my 20s and 30s. But podcasting is fantastic and you get to have these lovely conversations with people but really behind it for me is that same idea as the workshop it's i'm allowing i'm paying it forward so many people gave me the opportunity to share my message in the beginning of this brave healer journey and i really just want to be able to give that back to other people who need a little bit more exposure they need their message out in a little bit bigger way they're not really sure how to do it and these types of things are fun yeah so um do you primarily is it an interview format yeah, very similar. We do. Um, I haven't sort of um, gone the next step to doing them on video. So it's an audio only, mm -hmm. brave healing, words that change the world. And I just opened the 2019 schedule for um, applications. That podcast was so, um, so popular when I opened it up this year, just in 2018, that I filled every single spot for the year in 24 hours. Wow. So yeah, go, take that for a goal, right? So for 2019, I just opened it up. And if you would like a spot for that year, then just, you know, come over and, and fill out the application. That's great. That's great. So are there particular things like in terms of holistic healing that you believe help people maybe either more than others or, um, you know, when somebody comes to you and, and say their body is in pain, what, what are some of the first things that you do with them? Because mind, body and spirit is so connected. Yes. And so I'm going to I'm going to give you a quote from uh, Master Holloway, who is my martial arts teacher. His quote is, discipline the mind, the body will follow. And, you know, in the beginning, when I first started training in the martial arts and, and heard that quote from him and started to learn about the, the practice, I thought I understood it. And now I can say after a, <laughs> a decade of training that um, I really get it at a whole nother level because it all starts with what you're thinking and believing and then the actions you're taking toward what you think and believe. So the thinking comes first. If you're in pain, you're kind of stuck in a cycle that sometimes for people feels very impossible. They feel very stuck. They can't get the momentum to get out of the pain and they don't know what to do first. What to do first is discipline your mind to aim toward a situation that you prefer, one that you want, your desires, your dreams, your goals, you know, and maybe that's a pain-free body. Maybe that is a body that is mobile and flexible and strong and one that has the stamina to do adventures or whatever you're wishing, you know, for yourself as far as peak performance in your physical body. You can't separate it from your mind. And that's the first tool. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And then it's um, those actions. I like that too. So you've got the mind, but then what is it that you're going to do? And then eventually your body will, will adjust or things will start to manifest. Yes. I do an exercise in my workshop. It's called the hell yes and the hell no. And yes and no have a physical sensation in your body. And so what we do is we take a piece of paper, we put a line down the middle and we have our hell yes on one side and our hell no on the other. And I take them through a body, a guided body awareness exercise to really kind of feel what's going on. And on the no side, we describe it in our body, how it feels. So for instance, for me, the nose show up as tightness in my chest a little choke hold on my throat, my low back might be a little clenchy, my gut might feel a little clenchy. You get the idea, right? So right. 
we list that and then we do the same for the yeses. So I might even just invite your, um, your listeners today to understand what the yes feels like in you. I mean, have you ever even thought about what a hell yes feels like? And it's light and free and good and excited. And what does excited feel like to you? It's something that people don't even think about. But when you know the feeling and you can differentiate between those two, you can use those sensations as a compass. And you can let that, you can let your body or the language of your intuition point you in a direction that aligns with what you really want and away from the stuff you don't want anymore. Um, and that is really honestly one of my favorite exercises that I um, bring my ladies through. That's a great exercise. I've never actually done that, but that's a great exercise. And I think sometimes people ignore their intuition. And I think um, as women, we have so much intuition. And when we tap into our intuition and we allow ourselves to get quiet, um, there are downloads that can come to you and through you when you do discipline your mind, still your body, um, and really trust your gut and trust your intuition. Um, but that's really good because I guess like you were saying, you know what those sensations are going to be on the hell yes and the hell no, whereas you may not know what that is or how strong they can be on the hell no, right? Exactly. And I'll give you another little secret because this always comes up when I do this exercise. Um, people ask, well, what about the, the I don't know or the, you know, I don't know how this feels. Um, I'm confused. It feels foggy or fuzzy to me. And the big secret there, that's a no. So rather than having it be this, this gray area, the, the confusion, the stuck, the fuzzy, the I don't know, I don't know. No, that's a no, you guys. And so be very clear what the yes feels like is not that. A yes is not confused. A yes is very free, excited, light, um, nimble, agile type of feeling in your physical body. So that when I discovered that and started really moving toward what my intuition was always telling me, because every day your, your body is giving you the messages. Um, yeah, I know it always sounds a little, I, I start to feel like I sound a little crazy when I start to talk about it because I get so excited. It really, really works, I guess, if you want to say that. It's something that can completely change your life for the better. That's great. That's <laughs> great. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, talk a little bit about um, blogging and how that, I guess, is, you know, you sharing your message out there. I noticed that you're a guest blogger or you have guest blogged on a lot of different sites that people may have read. So what's it like for you to be a blogger? Yes, you're going to get me started on another topic mm -hmm. I love to talk about. <laughs> Thank you. Um, blogging is a way to build your platform. So if you're a healer, an author, an artist, and you're wanting to get more exposure and really build your platform. Blogging is a beautiful way to do it. And I started blogging and then started guest blogging. So the real power is guest blogging where, and I've been on sites like the Huffington Post and Mind Body Green, Elephant Journal, um, personalgrowth.com, the wellness universe. So for any of your um, listeners who are interested in submitting their blogs for um, a place, a guest blog place, the wellnessuniverse.com. These ladies are phenomenal. And you can come on and submit your blogs and you can do this for free. So um, there's also memberships for the Wellness Universe, but you can submit your blogs for free, you guys. On all of these sites, you can submit for free. Um, and the exposure is real. Um, I, I'll tell you the, the best story about that that I have is this past year, um, Possibilities Publishing Company, who is the one that released my book in June, found me on a guest blog. They found me, guys. So they wow. read something that I had written and they e cold emailed me and just said, hey, we'd love to interview for our blog. And I said, okay. <laughs> you know, right. how can I turn that down, right? right. So um, when I got to build that relationship, um, I emailed them back after that blog was published and I said, Hey, guess what? I have a book cooking. Do you want to take a look? And they said, okay. And the rest is kind of history there. So 
blogging has been really a, a magical tool for me as far as that um, networking connections and building my platform. Right, right. Now, do you see um, in your practice, um, you know, particular issues or trends or things that women in particular may may suffer from? Like, I know one thing is a lot of us um, don't do a good job of self care. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Is there anything like that, or or maybe you can even just talk to that and, and some of the advice that you give to people? Well, I mean, you hit on the big key for probably every woman that I've ever known my entire life, <laughs> right? Right. So, we are the caretakers of the world. We are the nourishers and healers and mothers of the world. And so, the thing is. I think that many of us were taught to be mindful of the needs of others first. And we were taught that that is something that we should do and be. And so we did that and we did it well until we all burned out. Yeah. And so I'm a very firm believer in nourishing yourself first until you're running on an overflow and you're serving from an overflow. If you're not doing that, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not eating right, if you're not doing your own exercise and your own practices that keep you feeling energized, you'll never be serving from an overflow. And so you will not have anything to give. Everything that you give is just going to decrease your cup a little more and a little more and a little more until your body starts to scream at you in some way, um, fatigue, exhaustion, pain, um, so many versions, right? Right. And we do not want to get to that point of our, of our body, mind, and soul screaming at us and saying, hey, wake up. You can't do this for very much longer. But the thing is, we've all sort of grown up in a society where that was what we were supposed to do. We learned that to be this, you know, peak performing perfectionist, we had to do all of that stuff before we took care of ourselves. And um, you know that this is a very hot topic and it's been a hot topic for a while now, but the key is for people to understand it at um, a, a very deep level for their energetic self. And when you start to experience the overflow, then there is nothing that will turn you back into that over people pleasing mode again. Because you finally realize, I finally, I mean, like, I have a lot of energy, if you could guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving that energy out every single day, almost from the moment that I wake up to the moment I go to bed. I do a lot. And people, I've had a coach say to me once, you know, it takes a little bit of stamina to roll with you. And that was meant as a positive thing. But, you know, at first I'm like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, right, does that right. mean I'm not a good, you know, not good or whatever? But to be able to function at that level of serving from an overflow and still having enough energy for yourself, that does take some practice. And it's totally doable, totally doable. I encourage everybody who's feeling just a little tired, like they're, they're functioning on this low level of fatigue and a minor resentment to wake up. This is not how you were meant to live. You were meant to live in a much more thrilling and joyful and abundant way in all ways. So if I'm the message you need to hear finally to get going on this, then let it be. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, amen. Um, <laughs> amen. I, I know one of the books that I read, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, was the Ariana Huffington book about sleep. Yes. That book, oh, wow. Um, just sleep alone. Sleep, just that yeah. one topic that she went deep on was really, wow, sleep matters. Like your yes. sleep hygiene matters, your, your rhythm of sleep, your, you know, everything around sleep and how just if you, if you make a few, maybe 10 degree changes, how that can then allow you to serve from overflow. Cause like you were saying, like the low grade fatigue and then, then you turn into the minor resentment I mean, I, I think I see that with my clients all the time. Yes. And it's, it's completely changeable. You just have to make a decision and start to be unapologetic about creating the boundaries around what you need. 
And I realize I talk about that and make it sound very simple. I mean, right now you might be surrounded with people who are not supporting you good enough to do all that or feel you feel too afraid to make those steps with the people that are around you. Maybe you're lucky enough to be able to make your own decisions and do it, you know, be afraid and do it anyway. But um, if you're starting to notice you're feeling like that, it won't get better. I, it will not get better. So you have to start to do something about it. The sleep, sleep is whatever amount of hours are the hours your body, mind, soul, and get for healing. And so if your sleep sucks, you never get a chance to regenerate and rejuvenate and get into healing mode. It's so important. We could talk, we could have a whole episode about that. <laughs> right, right. No, well, and that was one of the things I didn't realize until I read that book was the amount of healing that your body does when you're in these, in, in, and especially in like a deep, deep, deep sleep and yes. how nourishing that can be um, and why you shouldn't be running on the hamster wheel and you need to get off the hamster wheel and really take care of that. Even if it's taking a Friday off so that you have a long three day weekend and you just have some downtime to yes. just chill and do nothing. Um, I think, you know, I suffer from overscheduling. Um, and so just saying to myself, it's okay if I have nothing on the calendar, it's okay if I just take a nap on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, it'll be there when I wake up, right? And I'm gonna feel more refreshed when I do go back to work on a Monday. That is all so true. I've become the master of my naps. <laughs> Y'all are not gonna be less productive. You're gonna be more productive. This is what we, we all fear that we're missing out on. You know, we, we yes. sleep and we won't be able to X, Y, Z, right? but actually you're going to be more productive because you'll be refreshed and awake and aware and you'll be able to do things better. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and um, back to your comment about boundaries. That's like another thing that I see that we all have a hard time putting those boundaries in place to, to say, well, first of all, the support system is very important, like you said, but also the boundaries of, um, you know, you're just not going to engage with certain people that are going to bring you down or, um, you know, put you down and then um, keep keeping your commitments to yourself that you're going to go to the gym and you're going to go to yoga or whatever your practice is in terms of physical exercise. Yes, all of that, all of that combined. And, <clears throat> you know, like I said before, you may have people in your life who are making that more difficult. And, I think, oh, I mean, one thing I had to realize is that I was in charge. I had to take responsibility mm -hmm. for the way that I was feeling. And it didn't matter what anyone else was telling me I was supposed to do as a mom or an entrepreneur, you know, business owner. It still just came down to, am I going to be able to stay healthy? Because, I mean, we all heard it a million times. If you're, if you're the one that gets sick or has an illness or you know, then you're going to be good to nobody at that point, then you're going to need other people to help you. And nobody wants to be in that position, except many of us aren't willing to stand up for it for ourselves when it comes down to the wire. Um, and I had to start doing that. I was working full time before my son was born, the one that I told you about that I started Taekwondo with. And I continue, I took, you know, whatever it was, whatever I got at the time at my company for maternity leave, um, eight weeks, maybe it was a very short amount of time. And then went right back to working full time until I had my second. And after she was born, I was completely exhausted, sick, eight, nine, 10 times a year. I was sick more than I was well after she was born. I had completely depleted myself. And that was because I thought that I had to do what I was doing. I didn't feel like I had any other choices. I was being told from different sources, well, this is what needs to happen. And I just let it happen until it got too difficult. And I decided if I didn't make a change, um, you know, nobody was going to benefit. And especially my kids were not going to be able to have a mom that could function. Um, but making those decisions at that time was excruciating because I felt like I was going against what, 
well, I was, I felt like I was breaking the rules, you know, I'm a, you know, recovering good girl here. Right. <laughs> as, as many of you I'm sure are. Um, yeah. So not an easy road, but I will tell you it's completely worth it in the end to turn that around and make it work for me. Yeah. I think if, um, if you haven't, been in a situation where your health has been compromised and you, and you have that realization um, that your health is your wealth um, and that, you know, if you don't take care of your body and your functioning systems in a way, um, you're really not going to be good for anybody, including yourself. Right. So, and yeah. we get told this, so how many times have you heard that in your lifetime? And I'm at, and I'm asking myself this too, like, how many times did I hear that before I actually realized that if I didn't do it, there was going to be a problem? Exactly. And, and so we can like say this and we can encourage our friends and we, you know, we see it from the outside now a lot easier if you're one of those people who have made that really positive transition for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you look out into the world and you see how many people haven't figured that out yet. And they are getting sicker and sicker. They're having more and more issues. And you just want to shake them and go, listen, you got to do this. And they nod their head. Yes, I got to do this. And then nothing happens. What is that? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's hard when we look at our good friends and family and we want to help them there. We've maybe made a few steps ourselves and then we want to go out and tell the world about it. Right. And yeah, and it's hard, and you can't really do that for somebody else. They do have to have their own journey. They have to wake up on their own. They have to figure it out on, the, on their own. But the one thing um, that I think is so important is just go ahead and be the model. Go ahead and live your life in a way that makes you shine and that you can share your gratitude and love and energy and be the model and let them feel that fire. And sooner or later, hopefully, they will be warmed enough by it that they'll right. decide to make that change for themselves. Because I've tried, I've tried, you know, with very close family and friends, um, but it's, it's almost impossible. It can get frustrating. Yeah, it has to come from within. Yes. I mean, you, and, um, you know, in my case, I unfortunately had to get to a really bad place before I was like, Ooh, this is serious. You know, I was heading down the slippery slope until, um, I really kind of had a wake up call. So, yes. uh, it's like, you don't want your friends and family and clients or whatever to get the wake up call. Cause exactly. it's, it's not fun. And so, um, and then once you get to that point, you're like, how did I get here? And how do I get myself out? And how do I stay out and not have this be a pattern that repeats itself. So, um, yeah. So I had, I had a coach once tell me, um, please smell the smoke before your house burns down. That's and I started to learn what the smoke smelled like. And it was really, really good to understand it. And that actually kind of gets back to that yes and no exercise. Like when you really understand what those things feel like in you, then you, you are smelling the smoke and you can do something about it. And it's really taking the action to do something about it. That is the big, it's the big challenge mostly because we're just still a little bit of a, afraid to take that new action, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Because we get into these patterns where we're not even really thinking it's just sort of like in your subconscious you're just kind of that's how it's it's, it's like you're on repeat yes <laughs> a little exactly. bit yeah well I love I love your quote be the motto I think that's really really important um so my finale question is always what's the bravest thing that you've ever done and how does it inspire you today and I know you've done a lot of brave things <laughs> you mm. know you warned me about that question and I immediately thought oh my god what am I going to tell them <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have jumped off a 35 foot cliff before I have, um, you know, been in full contact sparring matches with men who are six feet tall. I have uh, drag raced my car. Um, I have done a lot of scary things, but this is what I finally came to when I had a moment to think about that. The scariest thing I ever did was say the words, I want a divorce. And that was because there were so many other things that could go wrong as a result of that decision 
Mm-hmm. Like the cliff jumping. Yeah. I mean, I knew I would land in the water and be okay. I knew I wasn't going to die. Um, I could have died drag racing my car, but there was low risk there. It was, you know, it was all safe and sound. I mean, you get the idea, right? Like right. the survival kind of fear is different from a fear that you're about to mentally, emotionally wreck your life. And that was like this feeling in me when I decided and actually not just decided, but spoke the words. Mm -hmm. And that's really, this is a great way to end the show because the whole message behind Brave Healer and Brave Healing is that being out loud with what you stand for is the most transformational healing work you will ever do. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think you probably had it stuck in your throat. You knew you needed to say it, but you know, then actually speaking it and just not even really knowing where it was going to lead or what was going to be the fallout for not only you, but those around you. Right. Um, so and yes, I mean, we, we worry that in my case, I worried I would, um, ruin my kids, uh, ruin my life. Um, and in the background of that is the knowing that you need to do it anyway. It's the knowing that none of that is actually really true. And it's quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. And I had to continue, I had to do that discipline the mind thing. I had to do that for intensely for more than a year and, and practice not making what I was feeling mean anything. Mm. And you, you get that, like you feel the feeling inside of you, like you're going to die. Like it's the worst thing you've ever felt. And then you start to make it mean something. You start to make it mean that you're a horrible person, that you're not good enough, that all of this, what if, what if, what, you know, the, the questions start to roll your mind. And so when I stopped that and just came back to my body and my breath, and I stopped making those feelings mean anything, that was step number one. And then step number two was to decide what I really wanted and then aim my life at that. And it's been pretty cool ever since. That's great. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and there may be somebody listening to this episode that needs to hear that, that is in the same exact place that has been putting it off or, you know, for whatever reason, um, you're on the other side and and you're here to talk about it. And you're here to say, like you just said, it's one of the best things that ever happened. And and all it's pretty cool because then you finally got to decide what it was that you did want. And now you've, you've manifested all of that. And now you're, you know, you're out there and you're helping so many people both in the healing arts as well as just women in general and writers and and creatives. And so keep doing what you're doing, Laura DeFranco as the brave healer. I think this has been amazing. Um, And so what's the best way for people to find you? Is it on bravehealer.com? Yes, definitely. Come on bravehealer.com. But I am also a total Facebook addict and I love interacting and engaging with you there. So the Brave Healers Mastermind and Refuge is my free group. And I would love it if you could be there. And guess what? Monday morning, I am starting the holiday mindfulness badassery practice in the group. And I'm going to live stream for you guys every single day from Monday till December 26 and guide you through a mindfulness exercise for your holiday. And um, so if you're into that, yeah, come find me on Facebook and we'll have some fun together this month. Great. Well, thank you, Laura. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to share some of your wisdom and just some of some of the things that you said were just truth bombs, gems, discipline, discipline, the mind, the body will follow. I mean, serve from an overflow. Um, just some of the advice that you have feel worthy and brave. I just love it. Love it. Love it. So I think we must be kindred spirits. (laughs) Definitely. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Brave Girls with Tracy M. as much as I did creating it. Each show is produced with you, the listener, in mind as you look for inspiration and motivation from other brave souls as you pursue your desires. I'd love to hear your feedback, so please leave me a review on iTunes. I read every one. And check out my website, tracym.com, for more free resources. You can also join my list and sign up for my newsletter right from the homepage. Until next time, stay strong, 
believe in your dreams, and go do something brave. We appreciate you joining us for this episode of Brave Girls with Tracy M. and hope that you enjoyed the show. For more information about today's episode, as well as additional free resources to help you achieve greatness in your life, visit tracym.com and sign up for our mailing list. Until next time, dream big, believe in yourself, and let your brilliance shine as only you can do.